so that perhaps next time you're either watching comedy or reading something, your own enjoyment of the whole thing is enhanced. So if anybody thinks this is full of jokes, you know, you can leave, <laughs> okay? So here's what I do, and uh, the cartoons that I co-create with Ajit Nainan, I write, in, I write the ideas, and he illustrates them. These come out in the Times of India. All humor, without fail, any joke, anywhere in the world, in any language, is about surprise. If you don't have surprise, there's no humor. No surprise, no humor. So that's the only law of humor. There's no other law. The rest is a combination of which audience you want to pitch to, what's your message, and what kind of laugh you want, I use. Things like observational humor. Just by plain observations, but this was five years ago, so maybe this is more of a cliche now. The reader, he has something like, oh yeah, I also noticed it. You know, it never came to mind. That, that appeals to people. Because you can relate to it. And it's something that somebody has shown you something and it's something is obvious. It's just that I'm moving around in the spotlight and I just showed something and says, oh yeah, it was there all along. Relatability, again, it's ridiculous. That Domino's Pizza guy can reach in 30 minutes. And if you're in traffic, it's impossible to go from one place to the other. That is getting across. So effectively, think of it like this. I've got a thought that I want to say. If I say it directly, it will get brushed aside. So I'm trying to package it, get your attention, with that attention, making you smile, making the reader smile, it gets across and the message blows up in his head. If I say it directly, it won't be fun. And he won't remember it and he won't smile. It is subtle, it is subconscious. That is the attempt. You don't succeed every time, but that's the basic principle. Smile memorable. A lot of people can make a lot of people smile. You know, you tickle somebody and he smiles. Somebody slips on a banana wheel, he smiles. But what makes a smile memorable? It's about truth and it's about misery. Truth means, yes, it's, you know it's there. We all know somebody is in this name. Do everything that's happening. <coughs> the misery is, somebody is taking advantage of it. Punching up means it's good to have an enemy. In this case, the enemy is the kids. Now, everybody is at times just sick of their kids. They won't do what you want them to do, they won't listen, and sometimes, you know, it's got to be serious. Come on, it's important. Now, sometimes, in this one, for example, he says, ah, I got this tool, I got the bubbles. Punching up to the enemy has been very effective 
רוח של שירו יומה. It's a disease today, and it's a serious disease. I think this is one of the causes of increasing cases of mental health today. Because people are presenting, you know, lifestyles that are a little off from the reality. I have yet to see a Facebook picture in which people are not smiling. <laughs> I have yet to see a group photograph in which somebody doesn't say, say cheese. It's about our human flaws. Only humans are funny. Trees are not funny, biscuits are not funny, animals are not funny. Only humans are funny. And nobody understood this better than Walt Disney. Because what Walt Disney did was that he created a world in which it was safe to see these flaws. That Uncle Scrooge is your uncle. That Mickey Mouse is that playful guy in you who's trying to just come out. And Walt Disney wanted to take you. He took you into that safe world so that you switch off from the outside world. In all these places, like a cartoon, inside that frame, you're in your own world. And the art that I'm trying to learn is how to draw you over there and keep you there for six seconds. That's it. Six seconds and I'm out. But in those six seconds, I want you to just forget what's happened from rapes and murders on the pages of 3, 4, or whatever, what Modi is doing, what Crazy Gavala is doing. And just to be there for six seconds, you need that relief, I need that relief. And in those six seconds of safety, the animals talk. And when the animals talk, you don't realize it's you talking. You don't realize they are the other person and you don't realize you accept the flaws. It's all about all human beings are flawed. And many of our flaws are calm. All I have to do is just look deep inside, look that introspection. Because I'm trying to look out for, okay, who else has these flaws? And with those flaws, I'm saying, all I have to do is just point them out. If they resonate with me. Because if they don't, then either that fellow has said something which doesn't match. Or maybe I just haven't discovered more of you of myself. And, uh, you know, it helps me. Yuma helps me a lot. Not only is it get topic, it helps me learn a lot about myself. Because if you don't reach inside, you can't come up with something and I can't do it you. So that's why, you know, it's, it's human flaw. So once again, all good humor, it's like a good book. It draws you inside and keeps you there. And then it's you, your thoughts, and you connect with the right. It's just that connection. And I'm seeking that connection. I'm telling you, it's so satisfying. Just getting that connection. Often I feel that, come on, yeah, I wish the reader was sitting right in front. I wish I could just talk to him. I wish I could observe his facial expression. I wish I could just understand what's going on in his head. Unfortunately, you can't do it with the newspaper, but I still do it. Because if I'm flying and somebody is reading the newspaper, I'm always looking like this. Amira Pejai, Amira Pejai, Amira Pejai, let me see. When he catches that, yeah, that time nobody ever reads this time. <laughs> This came out some three, four years ago. <laughs> now, subtext, I believe every cartoon or any, any message should have subtext. The subtext means, and this is three years ago, it's a unique point of view. At that time, I thought it was unique. I want to get that unique point of view across. And that unique point of view was very clear. And what the hell is happening, man? You wake up in the morning, somebody says good morning, and literally somebody else says good morning to you too. And there are 40 people in the group. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you too. Okay, now, here. 
these are the tools that I, do, I write comedy with because any craftsman, he has some tools. The tool here is very simple. It's the simplest and most common, commonly used tool in common. The analogy obviously being that without a phone you're handicapped. But to say it in a way that somebody says it damn funny, but not realizing what has been said, that today in this digital addiction age, we actually handicapped without a phone. That's what I want to say. And that's how I'll say it. All know these characters. My job is to just point them out. <laughs> Widely used tool, usually used tool. What I'm exaggerating, like in any meeting. Something serious is being discussed, and somebody's phone, somebody's phone will ring off. Thanks, nobody's phone rang just now. Ta -da. Now here also there's a victim, and that victim is there on the left. Mm -hmm. That traditional stereotype we have. That's, I don't know whether he exists, but. Okay, fine, but she knows how to order online. You know, it's in the modern context. And this is the irony. So here are some of the tools, some of the tools that I use to create humor. And I'll tell you how. And now I'm going to show you exactly how I use that to actually create it. And I'm going to show you pen and paper. So the first thing I look for is what's the pain and what's the misery? Yes, I checked. Sorry, the checklist is crossed. Pain and misery. Huh? The truth is there is a to-do list and, and there is misery. Exaggerated. So the to-do list, and the, I looked up Google and I said, what's, what are the major events in a person's life? And I came up with these six answers. I also wrote it down. Google, major events in a person's life. Death, birth, daughter, oh, sorry, wedding. Divorce, own marriage, having a child, funeral, most major event. So I came up with finally there's a maternity ward. And the dad who's a millennial is coming out and he says some experience, can't wait to scratch it off my to-do list. Now this is Joe one of the day. And I have to write 20. That's my target. Every day I have to write 20. I don't reach it many times, but at least that's my target. Okay, because if you write 20, you will come up with 5, 4, 3 good ones. And it's all a numbers game. See, any good thing you do, it's a numbers game. But if you don't play the dice, you're never going to hit them. So you have to keep writing. And to do that, you have to get yourself in a playful mood. So then I started playing around with analogy. In analogy, okay, let's go on to... Irony, irony is the opposite. So there is this bohemian who says, wait, I'm working on my nothing to do list. <laughs> so then you add that. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking each tool and saying, can I write something using this tool? On Madcap, I came up with there's an Egyptian mummy, and the archaeologist says, Now, 
He looks at the tape and he says, oh, it's his unfinished to do this. I think that's funny and I think I'll use it. So this is how things proceed. A good piece of humor is like a puzzle. For that two, three seconds, the reader has to solve it in his head. Because you have to engage the reader. Yeah, it's like a crossword. It's like a sudoku. Till you solve the puzzle in your head, you won't be involved. See, what I'm trying to tell you, like all crafts, you know, a subject, art crafts or whatever, they're pretty intricate. It's taken me five years to maybe learn five percent. It's taken me five years to learn five percent. And but what I've learned in this is that there are so many little pieces, but it comes down to the same thing. It's less about the message, it's less about the craft, it's less about the humor. Ninety percent is about the reader. You have to be able to understand the reader's mind. That same joke which works over here will not work in other places, with other people. Now can I communicate that to you and to tell you, yeah, mere ko bhi ho hai. That's all I want to do. Later if I can do it in a funny way, the funny way, so can you understand what's happening? How the message is going from this feeling, packaged it in a black box and exploding in your head. That's what I need to do. And that's my craft. It's literally a statement. A humorist just puts down a statement. And yes, I have basically practiced my craft. And with that craft, I can do it slightly better than the, uh, than the other person. And I have to do it in a way that grabs your attention. Now my big issue is, which is a big issue for all of us, how to stop and avoid becoming irrelevant. So, I do a lot of hard work early in the morning. I've taken a lot of private tuition online, some very expensive private tuition also, uh, <coughs> some good humorist in the US. Read a lot of those study of comedies, and I keep looking out for trends. Read a lot, whether it's New York Times, New York uh, cartoons or whatever, and try and see not only why are they good, but who are they appealing, appealing to. So you try to find a mind map of yourself, uh, of the world. And that is what it means to not become a relevant. If you can relate to the world, you don't need to do anything. But you need to be able to see if something is happening, okay, where does this fit in?